Hi guys and welcome back to our channel, where we recap and explain your favorite movies for you. What if one day you wake up and find your beloved gone, but with their grief you also find all the fingers pointing at you behind their disappearance? Prepare for goosebumps as you embark on an action-packed journey. Today we will review Gone Girl, a film based on Gillian Flynn's novel with the same title. It came out on October 3rd, 2014. Not to forget, it stars everyone's favorite Ben Affleck. Just a heads up, this film may mess with your head. So without further ado, let's begin. The movie starts with a man running his hand through a young lady's hair. In the background, he recalls what he always wants from her. His concentration upon her face was beyond words. He again put concentration of his thought to know the answers to the question of typical marriage, how the world has been perceiving and what it is actually. It also depicts a sharp contrast of both scenes. At the end of the it, Nicholas Dunn stands in front of his house and looks sad and depressed. As he moves in, we can see a time frame shift to the next morning. Nicholas is in a bar where he tells his sister, Margot Dunn, who has always worked as a bartender that it is his wedding anniversary. Surprisingly, he is sad on his fifth anniversary. January 8, 2005. Amy was writing in her diary about how she was crazy about Nicholas. How it has been hard for her to put up her fingers or describe in simple words how she has been feeling about him. She recalls how they have met at a party in New York, but they ditched that party. Nicholas shows her the side of New York she has never seen before. With him, for her it has been ride of excitement and unknown. They fell in love immediately. Back to the present, we again see Nicholas discussing Amy's anniversary tradition, a treasure hunt, with Margot when he received a call from his neighbor. When he got back home, he saw that the front door was open and his cat was out. Except for a broken center table and stool, everything was in place when he walked in, but Amy was not there. He called the police, and while the officer looked around the house, she was surprised to find out that Amy was the creator of character Amazing Amy. Everything looked fine around the house. Only two exceedingly small blood drops were found. Again the scene moves back to past on February 24, 2007 where Amy narrates the night Nicholas proposed to her while writing in the diary. They were at the success party of a character from her book, Amazing Amy. Amy was being tortured by a group of reporters through their questions when Nicholas came to her and asked her a series of questions, at the end of which he proposed to her. Meanwhile, present-day Nicholas is at the police station, where a detective, Rhonda Boney, questions him about his wife. He had no answers to any of them and suddenly recalls that he had not yet informed Amy's parents. He was calling her parents when he saw his dad at the police station and went to drop him off at an old age home. July 5, 2009, two years after their marriage, we can see Nicholas and Amy quite happy together. The scene shifts, and Detective Rhonda and her team can be seen going through Nicole's house once again. But before going in, she met a woman, Noelle Hawthorne, who called herself Amy's best friend and wanted to talk. They found their first clue in Amy's drawer in the form of an envelope labeled Clue 1, July 6. One day gone, Nicholas went to the police station the next morning for the press conference, where he met Amy's parents, Rand Elliott and Mary Beth Elliott. They held a press conference, during which Mary Beth told the press that they have a website and a hotline to share information regarding Amy. Her parents told Rhonda about her toxic ex-boyfriends after the press conference. She did not pay much attention because the topics they were discussing were quite old. After Amy's parents left, Rhonda told Nicholas about the envelope they found. He told her that this clue was for their anniversary treasure hunt, and she asks him to solve it for her as it will help them trace Amy's last activities. Nicholas pretended to be unable to solve the second clue in front of the detective, but he was able to locate the third clue in his father's home. He did not tell Rhonda when she arrived at his father's house, and she sensed something was wrong. July 18, 2010. Things started to get messy between Nicholas and Amy when Amy gave a million to her parents while Nicholas was jobless. July 7th. Two days gone Nicholas joins and meets the people who volunteered to find Amy, while Mary Beth was annoyed with him for acting like a hero. He noticed an odd man among them. When Rhonda inquires about Noelle Hawthorne, Nicholas responds that she is not Amy's best friend. The next series of scenes shows an enormous amount of people finding Amy. When Noelle Hawthorne shows up once again to meet Rhonda, she refuses to meet her. September 23, 2010. Nicholas and Amy move to his hometown, Missouri as his mother had been diagnosed with stage for cancer. While they are with his parents, Amy feels excluded and as if she is something extra. Back in the present, Nicholas receives a text, and after a short while, a girl he was dating arrives. 
Nicholas informed her that they would not be able to meet after today until it was safe. They then spent some time together. October 2, 2011. Things between Nicholas and Amy are at their worst. Nicholas spends most of his time out, and Amy does not exist for him. They started to fight about having a baby, and one day it got so bad that Nicholas pushed Amy. The next scene show Rhonda asking a young boy who appears to be involved in drug dealing if he saw Amy. He informed her that she came to him on Valentine's Day looking for a gun. February 14, 2012. Amy narrates that she was afraid of Nicholas and that he wanted her gone. Maybe a gun will help her sleep better. The search for Amy continues, but it takes a different turn when Noel appears during Nicholas's speech to the people of the town and tells everyone that Amy was pregnant. Rhonda bends her search toward Nicholas, but he refuses to talk without a lawyer. Moger also went to Nicholas where he lied to her that Amy did not want the kids. Following Margot's departure, Nicholas attempted to solve the third clue, while Rhonda searched Nicholas' father's house for a clue. Both were successful in finding what they were looking for. With shaking heart, Nicholas found his gift for the anniversary, while Rhonda found Amy's diary. The scene shifts to Amy driving away in the background, narrating that she will live her life while Nicholas rots in prison for her murder. The urgency and firmness in her voice gave away the essence of years of hatred she was keeping in her heart. As Amy drives away, she recalls how she set up everything to put her murder on Nicholas. She made Noelle a friend and pretended to be a helpless and suppressed wife whose husband beat her, threw a lot of blood around, and then cleaned it to leave the mark of physical abuse, wrote the diary in containing some truth and some lies including that Nicholas pushed her and she is afraid of her, burned the diary to the right amount, faked the pregnancy with the help of Noelle's urine sample, did a heavy amount of shopping on the credit cards to shows Nicholas in debut, a motivative to kill her, and left the clues as the anniversary tradition which could help her in framing Nicholas. July 5th, 10 hours gone. Amy settles in a new place and changes her outlook. When Nicholas found the anniversary gifts and the last letter from Amy, he realized what was happening. She farmed him for her murder. Time passes, and we see Amy plotting her suicide. She marked her calendar with sticky notes on how everything will proceed while also enjoying the remaining time. Nicholas hired Tanner Bolt as his lawyer, and they planned to meet Amy's ex-boyfriends, who went through a similar situation. Nicholas met Tommy O'Hara. Amy farmed him for rape, and Desi Collings refused to share anything. Tommy told her that Amy was taking full advantage of him, was cashing him when he tried to break up with her, framed him for rape, and destroyed him for his entire life. Meanwhile, Rhonda finds something off while going through Amy's diary. Tanner tries to convince Nicholas to go for an interview with Sharon Sheber and tell the public about Andy, his girlfriend but he sticks to their original plan to find Amy, while Amy was robbed by his new friends. As soon as they left, Amy also moved out of the house. July 12th, seven days gone. Amy met Collings and once again lied that Nicholas threatened to kill her, so she had to leave while Nicholas prepared for the interview with Sharon Sheber. Before the interview, Andy gave a press conference and told everyone about her relationship with Nicholas. Amy settles into Collings' lake house. July 13th, eight days gone after the interview. Both Nicholas and Moger were arrested based on the trap Amy set. July 26th, 21 days gone Amy has yet again blamed Colling for a rape. She staged the scene in front of the camera in such a way that when they were combined, it looked like rape, while Nicholas was billed out of jail by Tanner. August 3rd, 29 days gone Amy did her final preparations to get done with Collings, and when he came back home, Amy murdered Colling while having sex and portrayed it as self-defense during the rape. August 4th, 30 days gone Amy returned to Nicholas covered in Collings' blood from the previous night. She hugged him and passed out in his arms. The next scene shows them at the hospital with Rhonda and a team of other detectives. Amy told them that Colling kidnapped her and assaulted her every night while he kept her tied to a bed. He used to punish her by starving her. Throughout the whole story, Rhonda seems unhappy and tries to cross-question her. But she was silenced. Amy came back home with Nicholas. She confessed and told Nicholas the truth about Colling's murder. After he says that he could not stay with her, Amy reminds him that this will make him look evil. He agrees to stay until the situation calms down, but he cannot share the bedroom with her. He was terrified of her. Day 1 Home, August 5th. Amy is now a hero and a survivor, and she has met her fans and the press. August 9th, 5 days home. Nicholas informed Moger, Rhonda, and Tanner of Amy's confession and asked Rhonda and Tanner to save him but they were unable to do so. September 9th, five weeks home. Nicholas is not over the trauma yet and still feels unsafe around Amy. Amy tries to comfort him by saying that she will never hurt him. 
September 23rd, seven weeks home. While they prepare for an interview with Sharon Sheeper, Amy told Nicholas to confess the things he didn't do but that she wrote about in her diary, such as pushing her and buying everything on credit. Nicholas agrees without any argument. Moreover, Amy told him that she was pregnant, and this news shocked Nicholas to the core. They were never together after she came back. He threatened to leave her and said he wanted maternity and blood tests, but Amy was once again successful in stopping him through emotional blackmail about his children. Before the interview, everyone was gathered at their place during he told Moger about the pregnancy. This broke her. She says she cannot see him enduring torture in the name of marriage, but Nicholas asked her to support him like she always did, and she did. During the interview, Nicholas said that Amy is pregnant. The scene shifts and we are brought back to the first scene of the movie where Nicholas is running his hand through the hair of Amy, and the questions he wanted to ask her makes more sense this time. The movie ends with that. If you're wondering how the film Gone Girl differs from the novel, stick with us. The book version of Gone Girl is a crime novel. An engrossing, inventive thriller in which a major plot twist occurs right in the middle though. The book's concreteness is said to be one of its numerous virtues. It's not just that the book is plausible as it is full of texture and detail, both forensic and psychological. The events in the novel make sense. Nick and Amy's voices, thoughts, and actions appear to be those of real people. Whereas the film blurs the line between genre fiction and postmodern fiction, it is decidedly unreal, in the manner of Fight Club, a film in which the actual and symbolic occupied the same slice of reality. Its characters are ciphers, the setting is incidental, and the violence is stylized. Gone Girl is a countercultural mystery because it allows us to enjoy the reassuring heritage of the traditional mystery, which feels like it's building toward a spotless solution even as we enjoy the fun of toppling it over and watching the pieces fall where they may. Thank you so much for staying with us from the beginning till the very end. We would love it if you could like subscribe and hit the bell icon if you never want to miss any updates. We are planning to bring more fun content for you on this channel. Until next time, take care.